guys, welcome back to Harmon Homestead. Today, we received a very special package in the mail. I'm super excited. We are actually going to grow some seeds from Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company and show you the growth from beginning of the seed stage to harvest. And I mentioned that on my last video on the tomato seedlings we were starting. And we have already four sprouts that have come up in our little seed tray. So I am super excited. We'll go over those, but I want to open this together with you guys and show you exactly what we're going to be growing this year. I am so excited. Spring is almost here. It is time to plant. It is time to get ready. It is here. It is here. It is here. <laughs> so, all right, guys. I am so excited. All right. Let's see here. Oh, I'm so excited. Look at all of this. Ah, they are the best. Look at this right here. Okay, I'm gonna show you every one of these. I may not can pronounce these correctly. I understand that, but I'm gonna show you the picture and show you what we're doing. And I'll tell you when we plan to start these indoors or direct so. So let's start with number one. I have some chocolate cherry sunflowers. I think those will be beautiful. And these, I believe, are direct sown. So we're going to do that. You can start these indoors. It says start indoors two to three weeks before last frost or direct sow in spring. We'll direct sow these outside. Flowers are great in your garden because they draw pollinators. Where we live, there's, there's more pollinators than plants. <laughs> we have plenty of pollinators, but it never hurts. And it just helps bees and things like that to have the flowers there. So awesome project to help save the bees as well. Look into that. Okay. We have water leaf boco boco spinach. Now this, I believe we can go ahead and maybe start indoors. Let's see here. Surface so indoors four weeks before last frost or and transplant two to three weeks after last frost. So now this spinach here, we picked this because it apparently is great for heat. Um, and it says on the back, prefers heat, humidity, abundant moisture. Well, it should do great here. The moisture might be a problem, but we have heat in the South and we have humidity. Lord knows. So, I think that this would do great. We have struggled with spinach before because things like that, like cooler weather, and I'm just not, my fall garden and my early spring crops have suffered because I'm just not honed in on how to grow those things. So, I definitely wanted to try something that would be more suited for my environment. Okay. Next, we have the autumn zebra pole beans. And these will direct sow outside um, after all danger of frost. And I might actually sow these on into the summer and see how they do. I'm gonna plant English peas here in just a couple weeks. So I'm gonna let those do produce and then probably behind those plant these. But that's the picture. They look, I, I like, I'm gonna tell you why I picked these. I wanted to try something of course, different. I grew rattlesnake beans last year and contender bush beans. I like these because they have color to the pods. When you grow any kind of bean, the bean, if, if it's green, grows on a vine or a bush and everything's green. The only thing that you can see is the bloom unless you get a colored bean pod. Now the rattlesnake beans, some of them have little markings, just like the purple here on these beans, but most of them do not. So it's hard to see. And especially when you're out in the heat and the sun trying to pick these off of a, a vine or a trellis or a bush, it's hard to see. You have to, it is very hard. So I really wanted something that was colorful that I could see. And in fact, what I plan to do with these is grow these alongside my corn. And I'm only gonna do this in one little trial, one little section of my uh, sweet corn this year. 
I want to put beans beside the corn for a nitrogen fixer. But I, I struggled with corn the first year. It was pitiful, y'all. The second year, last year, I used the triple 13 ammonia to help to fertilize my corn. You have to be careful that it has to rain on it. If not, it will burn your corn up. So the fertilizer will, you have to do it right before it rains, like a day before or that day. So I wanted to try this as a nitrogen fixer right here. Beans produce nitrogen. I want to see how that would do. You've probably heard of the Three Sisters Garden. This is part of it. It's the corn, some kind of nitrogen fixer, like a bean, and then a squash. It all works together in harmony and helps each other. So I really want to try this on just one little section and see how it does compared to the ammonia. I feel like the corn will also give this something to grow up and you won't have to trellis it. So whole beans, we're going to try those. But again, get something with some color so you can see it. And that's why I also picked these, Marvel of Venice pole beans. These have a little bit lighter color and it says extra large pods, um, vigorous long vines need support. So again, this is, this is gonna be direct sown as well as these. Just different colors so I can see these and just trying it different. I also, I, beans, I can grow. I can grow some beans one way or the other. <laughs> now, other things might be different, but beans we have down pat. And I would recommend that to anybody that's a beginner gardener. Everybody says radishes. I planted radishes and not even had luck. Like, guys, if you cannot grow anything, try to plant some beans. Bush beans, these are red swan bush beans. Look at that bean. I am so excited. They're easy to put up. They're easy to to eat. You don't have to do anything special. You can just open a can or open a bag that you froze and boil it and be done. And that's a side for a meal. That is sustainable. I put up more green beans than anything last year. I did a video on canning sustainability foods. Green beans are number one to me because you can get such mass production with so few plants and you can, you can put some food up and there's very little work except well, to me, it's not work because I enjoy sitting there snapping beans. I enjoy that. Now, it may be to you, but that to me, I enjoy it. I love sitting in my rocking chair snapping those beans and stringing them. I just love it. So, that's not work to me. And you can get so much out of just one picking. At least, last year, we were doing four-quart jars every three days in the height of, of beans. And that was just a 30-foot row planted with pole beans. That is a lot well, two, two rows, two rows that are 30 foot long. So that, that's a lot, you know, that, that's a lot. So red swan bush beans, the color. Again, I want to try something that's going to be visibly easier to, to pick and, and get my harvest. I, look at that red bean. I'm so excited, y'all. Okay, we have early fortune cucumbers. And I just liked these and I just wanted to try these. There's no rhyme or reason. I just wanted to try some cucumbers. Um, squash. I wanted to try these. It says it's an old French heirloom Cinderella pumpkin. I just wanted to try them. I just wanted to try them. May do that with the corn and the pole beans. I'm not sure. All right. Mango or vine peach melon. I thought this was super cool. It was unique. Uh, let's see here. Three inch fruit the size of a peach with a yellow rind and bland white flesh. I'm just reading off the back of all these seed packets, guys. Cooking pickling type. Find easy pie recipes online. So go check out their website. If you don't have fruit trees, if you don't have berry bushes, something like this might be I really looked for some kind of fruit that I could put up without having mass trees in production or blueberry bushes. And I planted probably 12 blueberry bushes last spring and those have grown and done well, but it takes a lot. And to, you know, to have a huge harvest, it's gonna take masses. So I wanted to try something that I could grow. And if, you know, if it did great, fine. If it didn't, fine. It wasn't taking up a lot of space that was permanent. So I'm. 
I really want to try these and I think this will be probably my most interesting seed packet that I requested. I, th I think this is, this is cool. Okay. Most of you have heard of this one, Blue Hubbard Squash. I cannot wait to try that. Now, some of these might, we might wait until the fall garden. We'll just, we'll see. But I think, I think we're going to try most of these in the spring. We have Winter Luxury Pie Pumpkins Squash. So I think that'll be cool. Little pie pumpkins. You hear something, I got my little newly hatched chicks that are in their little box, guys. So sorry about the chicks. Okay, spaghetti squash. Everybody knows what that is. They've heard of it. I wanted to try it. Okay. Crookneck early golden squash. That's a very common garden variety. Okay. I had to do this in remembrance of my uh, state here. Clay County yellow meat watermelon. It says it comes from Clay County, Alabama. And we have our homestead in Alabama. So I thought that that would be an interesting row. And it said that these seeds were saved from Clay County, Alabama, grown for at least 100 years. So if you're from Clay County, Alabama, you might could tell me a little bit more about this watermelon. I've got a royal golden watermelon. I just thought that this looked cool. I, I really did. Um, it says the rind turns brilliant golden yellow when ripe. So I grew watermelons two years ago and I had the worst trouble deciding if they were ripe or not. I know you can thump the watermelons, you can look at the vine, blah, blah, blah. Apparently this one will turn colors when it's ripe. <laughs> so that might be a foolproof watermelon to grow. Okay. Walking stick kale. If you've watched any of my videos, I have these planters that are stackable. Um, if you can't grow in the ground, these above the ground planters, go back and look at my $1 mop buckets, my $1 stackable planters. Now these, this variety of kale obviously would not grow in that. You see how tall it is on the picture. However, I've developed a love for kale that will be here until I'm here. <laughs> it's, I love kale. I love it anyway, you can, whatever you can do to it. And it's, it really is heat resistant here in the South. If you plant it at the right time of year in the fall or spring, it, it is heat resistant. It's durable. I've had the worst trouble with lettuce because it's so fragile, but this, this stuff is tough. It is tough. It's got thick leaves. You can chop it up, saute it any way you want to. You can eat it fresh. And I love salads. Kale, guys, is the way to go. And I wanted to try this. It says it can grow up to 20 feet tall. Um, the, This right here is going to be the experiment of a lifetime here where we live. So, all right. I wrote down and, and told Baker Creek I would like to try these micro tom tomatoes. We have a new project going on I want to show you. We have actually gotten into hydroponics indoors. I've got one little hydroponic grower and it's actually growing, okay? So I wanted to try these and that and see how that would do. So that's what that's for. So we'll set that to the side. It's gonna be a little while on those because right now I have Swiss chard and tango leaf lettuce and ruby red lettuce inside of the hydroponic grower and they're just getting started. So it's gonna be a little while on the micro toms. I wanna get a harvest off what I've got in there right now. Um, but I am super excited about the hydroponic growing. If you do not have space, you can grow indoors. It, there's no maintenance hardly to that. If you live in an apartment, if you live anywhere, if anything, there's, it's an experiment and it's fresh greens for you to eat. So, hey, try it. And it's a great science experiment for kids because you get to see, like on this tomato, you drop it in a little, little pod and you get to see the roots form while they're forming. I've never seen roots grow because everything's in soil and I don't think most people have either, but to see roots grow from the seed out into the little pot or the soil is amazing, guys. That's that's so cool with hydroponics. And then you see the root growth under the little pod into the water. That is awesome. And you see the plant to the top. It's cool, it's cool, guys. So that's what's coming up for this. Okay. Another gourd, okay? This is um, Italian gourd. It's long, slender. Um, 
I just thought it was cool. I thought it was cool. I, I can't wait to try it. Okay. Now we have this squash. Another interesting squash I want to try. I think it'll be very cool. Okay. And last but not least, Evening Sun Sunflower. I just thought that, that was so pretty. I thought that was so pretty and I just wanted to try it. So we have got tons of seeds here. All of these we are going to be starting for our zone. If we do start these indoors, it will be probably in March, bordering April. The beans will direct sow as well as the sunflowers. And I, I think that's what we got guys. So follow along with us. Again, we're gonna show you from planting these indoors, starting from transplants or direct sowing to harvest, whatever we get. This is educational. Um, th they were nice enough to send us these and this is just to show you. And I picked some random things because I wanted to learn myself. I just want, this is about education guys, to get you to grow something. And all these look so pretty and they, and they sound so cool. So I, it's education. Get out, grow something, learn something, and become sustainable. We'll see you next time on Harmon Homestead.